my video for December the 27th, 2018 is video number 2,947. Title is My Cousin's Christmas Present, Death. I got word yesterday, Christmas Day, that my first cousin died the day before. He was 54, the same age at which my dad died. He died of a heart attack, same as his dad did at age 60. I had two first cousins die as teenagers. There have been a lot of untimely deaths in my branch of the Van Dyke family tree. Alan's dad, as several of my relatives were, was a Pentecostal minister. Even though I was not in contact with him, I'm sure his family is grieving. I have often heard it said at funeral services, weep at birth, rejoice at death. Of course, most do the exact opposite. We do the same in regard to many cliches we often hear, like love those who persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. That one is in the Bible. The other one I named is not although I thought it was. I imagine his immediate family and friends are grieving over their loss. Not only humans, but even some animals display sorrowful behavior in the face of death. Life for the living goes, life for the living though goes on. We face challenges and contradictions. The world is filled with them. I wonder about another cliche. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? What's life really about? Makes one wonder, if only briefly. Yes, I was surprised to get that Christmas present, the notification of my cousin's death. And as I said, I have not been, I'm not in contact with a lot of members of my family. My, my, my son and daughter, I, you know, I'm in communication with fairly regularly because they live right near me. Uh, but the ones that live out of the area, I don't communicate with them much. My cousin Harold, who uh, is a retired minister, Pentecostal minister, uh, I communicate with him a little bit on Facebook. And uh, I have a few other relatives uh, from Ronnie Moore's family. And actually, Ronnie Moore was, yes, he was, he was my great aunt's uh, son. So not my first line rel relatives, but the second tier of the family tree, so to speak. Anyway, folks, uh, the point that I'm making is this. We don't know when we're going to go. I was taken to school one day, and I've said this in other videos in the past, by my great uncle, Thomas, who was actually known as Uncle Tuck. And when I come home from school, they said Uncle Tuck died today. And one of my other great uncles, Uncle Andy, he was helping a uh, one of his neighbor boys uh, build a tree hut or something, and felt tired and sat down on a log or whatever and died. And he, they were both young men. They, I don't think either of them was, old. I think my uncle, uh, my uncle Andy was uh, maybe even in his forties when he died. So there's been a lot of early deaths in the Van Dyke family tree, as I said. And why that is, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Um, my mother's family, they had one untimely death. One of her brothers was killed in a strange accident as he walked to school one day when a pulley went off of one of the farm equipment thing and just flung and hit him in the head and he was gone. Uh, so death, what's it all about? Or should I say life, what's it all about? We live for whatever period of time we're given, and then we exit this world 
and go to some other world. Now we have all sorts of belief systems in place about death. Some believe that we go to heaven. Others believe we just go in the ground and wait for some kind of a resurrection. Others believe we just die and that's the end of it. But what's the meaning? What's the purpose? Is there a purpose? I've always believed for myself that I was here to help bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Even when my family abandoned me and thought that I was no longer a proper Christian because I was building walls to denominations in the early days that were not considered as Christian as my Pentecostal heritage <laughs> taught me. Uh, and then I branched out into non-Christian religions because I believed the prime directive was to love those even those that say all manner of evil against you falsely, even those who treat you badly. Now, I got to admit, it's hard for me to love the attorneys and the bankers that stole the home that was given to me as a gift to my life ministry. Uh, and it's, it's not been easy to just say, well, I forgive you. And if, but, if they, but if they actually asked for forgiveness, it wouldn't be a problem at all. The problem is there is no repentance. That's always been the problem with evil. The people that commit the worst crimes against humanity don't seem to ever repent. And not only don't they repent, they seem to have blessed lives with great abundance and uh, uh, all sorts of amenities that they're, uh, are dumped upon them or given to them, and they don't seem to have the challenges that so many of us poorer people have, those of us that have not been blessed with riches and not been given lands and property and titles of nobility and things like that. No, we, we have to suffer and die unfulfilled lives in many cases. I don't want to die an unfulfilled life. I want to live to see my mission completed. I want to live to see the kingdom of heaven actually manifest on earth. Not die and go to some sweet by and by, but here on this planet now. I don't live to find peace in my heart. I will never find peace in my heart when there's not peace in the world. Now, when I say I'll never find it in my heart, I can, I have experienced levels of peace momentarily or for short periods of time here and there throughout my life. I would be not telling the truth if I said there were not. There are times of, of even bliss that I've experienced, uh, where I felt absolutely connected and in communication with God. But there have also been many times that I have felt as if my prayers were, were just bouncing back off of some uh, invisible shield that never, that they, the prayers and the aspirations never reached the throne of God, if God has a throne. Uh, that's an expression, of course, that many of us have used. The throne of God, seeing God as the king of creation or the queen of creation. It doesn't matter to me whether God was masculine or feminine because I believe that God has to be both since all life divides into masculine and feminine, or at least most life does. Uh, lots of questions. Lots of questions. As I said, it makes, makes me wonder what it's all about when I face relatives dying at such an early age and I see so many of my friends struggling just to keep their economic heads above the water to the insane world we live in. Thank you for listening. Namaste.